Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and have the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 18th of October. NSA Doval slams Pakistan for blocking India's land access to Central Asia. Two BSF personnel injured as Pakistan Rangers open fire along border. And activists flags atrocities China Park Nexus in Balochistan. And now for all the details. Underscoring the importance of India's connectivity and economic integration with Central Asia, National Security Advisor Ajit Doval on Tuesday in a veiled attack slammed Pakistan for blocking India's land access to Central Asia. Speaking during the India-Central Asia NSA's meet in Kazakhstan, Doval said that the absence of direct land access between Central Asia and India is an anomaly and the absence is the result of a conscious policy of denial by a particular country. He said that terrorism in all its forms and manifestations continues to constitute one of the most serious threats to international peace and security and that any act of terrorism is unjustifiable. Pakistan doesn't even allow India land access even to Afghanistan, which India sees as a contiguous neighbour. Two personnel of India's BSF, the Border Security Force, sustained bullet injuries on Tuesday after Pakistani rangers fired without provocation at an Indian post along the international border in Ernia sector of Jammu and Kashmir. In a statement, the paramilitary force said the Pakistani forces targeted the Vikram post on Tuesday evening, which was befittingly retaliated by alert BSF troops. India and Pakistan in February 2021 had renewed the ceasefire agreement for achieving mutually beneficial and sustainable peace along the borders. The agreement has been by and large held between the two countries, with minor ceasefire violations by Pakistan being reported in the last three years. Moving on, the fifth charter flight under the Indian government's Operation Ajay, facilitating the return of Indian nationals from conflict hit Israel, touched down in capital New Delhi in the wee hours of Wednesday. Taking to X, Indian Foreign Ministry said the flight which arrived from Tel Aviv had 286 passengers on board, including 18 Nepali nationals. So far, around 1,300 Indian citizens have returned from Israel, which hosts around 18,000 Indians, including students, traders and caregivers. There has been no casualty of any Indian national so far in the conflict. However, 10 Nepali citizens were killed in the attack by Palestine-based terror group Hamas last week. More flights are expected to be operated in subsequent days, both by India and Nepal, to evacuate their citizens. हाँ इंडियन गवर्नमेंट अच्छा किया है कि हम लोग इवेक्यूट किया क्योंकि बहुत लोग जो हैं डरे हुए थे जो बॉर्डर एरिया में जिनके इंस्टीट्यूट हैं वो डरे हुए हैं तो उसके लिए तो धन्यवाद मैं देना चाहूँगा इंडियन गवर्नमेंट वी फर्स्ट ऑफ़ ऑल वी वुड लाइक टू थैंक द इंडियन गवर्नमेंट फॉर and they are very happy. They have personally thanked uh, the government of India uh, for this support. The war between Israel and terror group Hamas entered its 12th day on Wednesday. US President Joe Biden has also arrived in Tel Aviv for complex diplomatic mission aimed to calm the tensions in the region and shore up humanitarian efforts. The death toll in the ongoing conflict has surpassed 4,000, making it one of the deadliest conflict in recent times in the West Asian region. Moving on, activist Kambar Malik Baloch raised concern over gross human rights violations by Pakistan in Balochistan recently and urged global intervention. A report. Members of the Baloch Human Rights Council recently raised concern over Pakistani atrocities in Balochistan as they held demonstrations in Geneva to highlight the plight of the people in the region and sought intervention. Activist Kwambar Malik Baloch 
said thousands of people have become victims of kill and dump policy of the Pakistani state for expressing dissent, while the whereabouts of many others remain unknown. So the Pakistani authorities they have continued their suppressive uh, policies against the Baloch people and uh, all those people uh, who are calling for their right to self-determination, even the people who even support these demands are being uh, forcibly abducted and extrajudicially killed. The activist also put a spotlight over China's expansionist agenda in Balochistan and Pakistan's complicity in the wake of the China-Pakistan economic corridor. So the Baloch believe that uh, uh, the Pakistan and China nexus uh, is uh, to exploit their national resources, to uh, bring people from the other parts of Pakistan and uh, inhabit them in their homeland, which will eventually convert them into a minority. The United Nations Refugee Agency on Tuesday urged the international community to keep focus on the plight of the Rohingya refugees amid a funding crunch um, and the lack of long-term solution for their safe return to Myanmar. About one million Rohingya Muslims fled a military-led crackdown in Buddhist-majority Myanmar in 2017 and are now living in camps in Bangladesh in what UN High Commissioner for Refugees Filippo Grandi described as the biggest humanitarian refugee camp in the world. Grandi was in Bangkok on Tuesday to host a meeting on the Rohingya issue, seeking pledges and support from governments and the private sector ahead of the Global Refugee Forum in December. So the idea of these projects was bringing communities together around small issues, building a school, digging a well, repairing houses and so forth. So this is a small entry point, but in a situation that is quite suffocating, we need little windows, right? So we are trying to push that. But to do that, we need the de facto authorities, uh, in, in the military authorities in Myanmar, <laughs> to give us access and to facilitate this work. And this is where we need ASEAN to help. And scores of women from the Rajput warrior community performed their traditional sword dance called the Rar Ras in India's Rajput city on Tuesday to mark the ongoing Navratri festival. Take a look. A group of women donned up in colourful dresses on Tuesday participated in Talwar Ras, a traditional dance form of Rajput warrior clan which is performed using swords in India's Rajkot city. The annual event is organised by the erstwhile royal family of Rajkot as part of the Navratri festival dedicated to Durga, the goddess of power, and to showcase the bravery and valour of Rajput women. But this time, the participants came up with a new twist as they performed the sword dance on two wheelers and vintage cars. They practiced for over a month to coordinate their movements and display their skills. This time uh, last year, they had decided uh, what new can be done, so they wanted to do on horse. But uh, as the availability of horses is not there, so they decided uh, the substitute, seeing to the today's times, they found the substitute of uh, scooties, uh, motorcycle, bullet uh, motorcycle and vintage car. The art of sword dance dates back to Mughal era when Rajput women welcomed their men after they returned victorious from a battle. The event aimed to send a message that women are just as powerful as men and can defend themselves and their country. We are doing it for two days. Today is our second day that we have done. We can see that our power is coming out. We don't need to do any work. And we can understand that the mother is here. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.